Hello my soccer universe, to the review of what is officially the last round of Serie A action. However, we are not done yet, there's still something to play for and that's why we will have another review video next week where we also look back at the Serie A season in its entirety. So look out for that. However, this round here was full of emotions. Emotions. We had tears of joy, tears of melancholy, tears of sadness everything was in there we had to say goodbye to coaches we had to say goodbye to players which all we go to we also had to say goodbye to owners in a way and this is where i want to start the ownership situation of inter where Steven Zhang and the Sunni or in the Sunni Corp Corporation had to pay up a loan by the beginning of last week. Thankfully, there was a day off, so they had a day to pay off. Of course, they couldn't pay off the 400 million euros to Oak Tree, which meant that similar to what happened to uh, Milan with Elliot, which was, I think, in 2018, that the fund is taking over the club. Elliot then decided to, yeah, let's restructure the club, let's put it on professional um, leadership, uh, reduce the wage bill and all the crazy spending, prop it up and sell it on, which they did to Redbird for quite some profit and the Valle Scudetto in the meantime as well. Now the situation is a little bit different here with Inter, seemingly uh, simply because of the sporting situation. Inter is a juggernaut in Serie A at this moment. They reached a Champions League final. They could very well have reached another Champions League final this season. They ran away with Serie A. They're the uh, absolute most dom dominant team. And they have quite a few players that are with value. And so Oak Tree could employ a strategy where they just sell everything off to make money back. The short-term strategy but I think they're gonna go for long term they already said football operations are now with Pepe Marotta and now we have to see what's gonna happen I don't think there will be fire sales at Inter I really don't don't think so I think they will go more the Milan route which might be good news for Inter fans not good news for this guy here you know I don't want to see Inter vanish really I don't because I think they're an amazing squad and I, I think the league is better if there's Inter however you know a little bit of leveling of the playing field might not hurt <laughs> give the others a chance but honestly a great Inter team is great for Serie A in the sense because everyone else need to lift their level as well and seemingly this is what is probably gonna happen so I think they have to be smart in a transfer market. I think a renewal of deals uh, that are costly will probably not happen under the new Oak Tree ownership. So uh, there might be change, but Inter has been really smart overall on the transfer market. You know, they had to buy a sell off the best players every year and they found new players and Pepe Marotta is the right man to do so. So yeah. Let's see where this will go. I'm sure that Inzaghi will stay on. Um, he, I don't know why he is not talked of uh, more bigger clubs, but then on the uh, in, in the end he is at a pretty big club already. So never forget that as well. Uh, it also means that there's now some movement again in the stadium talks where uh, Milan have been largely going it alone into because of the financial situation have then made also moves but you know really couldn't do much there. Uh, the relationship between Redbird and the Sunning group really there was no talks what, whatsoever. This might now resurface again and so maybe there's a common situation with the stadium maybe also a new renovation project for San Siro I don't know personally honestly as much as I love San Siro I think that in order to be profitable you need to have a modern stadium uh, you need to have a new stadium and you I think you need to have your own stadium yes stadium sharing you probably can share the cost you can build a nicer stadium I get all that but sharing again with your CCD rivals seems a little bit anachronistic to me Speaking of San Siro, let's talk about the other goodbye. So goodbye Stephen Zhang, hello Oak Tree is the first one. The second one is of course the big goodbyes at Milan. And while I think it was too much in the papers that Pioli is not gonna continue and I'm not sure how much the relationship was there on uh, good or bad, I have to say how this was handled overall uh, was with class in, in a way. Yes, you announced that thank you Pioli, you really propped up uh, Milan, he did. 
uh, he, he needed some help as, as, as well. But he really did prop up Milan again, brought them back to the top level. And for that, you will be eternally grateful for P uh, Pioli. Every Milan fan is. And I remember when he, he was hired, I saw him as Fior at Fiorentina. I said, this is a coach I really would like to have. We got him. He did great at Milan. Will he be a legendary coach? Probably not. Although, you know, I, I think he's more like the Albert Zaccaroni uh, getting an unlikely championship type, but then uh, failing to take the team to the next level. And that's why I think it has run its course. I'm still a little bit with threat interpretation. What's coming now? Is there really a coach that can lift Milan to the next level? And unlike many Milan fans, I'm actually not unhappy with Fonseca because Fonseca's aroma has been really great. And I think there's potential there for something extraordinary. However, I'm not quite seeing it as well. So I think we're a little bit more uh, in for more of the same. But on the other side, it might be very attractive to do so, to see it. So I'm quite positive. But back to Pioli. The way it was handled, they said they could buy. Everyone gave it. And then on the day of the game against Salsa Santana, uh, instead of the team photo, the entire team surrounded him gave him the opportunity to say goodbye as yes Leo tried to lift him and Leo really wanted to make it special for our Pioli almost to a degree it's like a little child that tries too hard uh, really wanted, wanted to make it special but and then the whole stadium clapping even though the Kurva did not want to chant but at least there everyone joined in because everyone regularly recognized thank you you've done a good job for Milan Milan was in good hands with you it's just time to move on to the next level hopefully Hopefully, this is what the Kurva are demanding. Um, there was also the goodbye for Giroud, which I already did a couple of videos ago. I still have, have him here. So eternally grateful for him joining. And he broke the curse of the number nine. And then, of course, Simon Kia, who together with Ibrahimovic, those are the two signings uh, pre-corona, like in 2020, that really then got Milan on the next level. Especially in uh, his uh, first two to three seasons, he was really outstanding. Then injuries took a hold and it was not that, that great anymore, but I love to have him there. He's also a very inspirational uh, guy to play for. More quiet. Sad to see those go, but you know, it's also time to move on. Maybe there's something new coming. Whether it will be better, that remains to be seen. The game itself, yeah, should have been an easy win. It was not. It was more or less how the season went overall for, for, for Milan. You took a 2-0 lead. Giroud got his farewell goal. Deonardes had made it 3-0. It was off, offside. And then Salentana pulled it back. 2-1, uh, 3-1 Calabria. And then two goals because you brought on some youth team players, including a uh, youth um, team goalkeeper who with his more or less Nava with his first touch had to take the ball out of the net yeah that was a little bit odd to be said so yeah but it didn't really change anything overall However, the most emotional goodbye happened that day early or the Thursday evening to allow Fiorentina to prepare for the conference league final when Claudio Ranieri had announced that he's gonna retire from coaching and he faced in his last game as a coach Fiorentina. Now, uh, he was Fiorentina coach and he won his only domestic silverware in Italy with Fiorentina. It was a Coppa Italia in the mid 90s. So I found this quite fitting. Uh, he also that he retired as coach of Cagliari, a, a team that he had now saved twice from re relegation that he brought up a promotion. Also seems very, very, very fitting for a manager that um, I think is extremely beloved and one of the good guys. He's not a manager that got you trophies, but you always felt that he's a good guy. I mean, his most successful spells were probably at Fiorentina, then early on at Valencia. Uh, the second spell at Valencia did not, not work out. And I think the one that we probably will regret is uh, the championship with Roma that he threw away more or oh, the team threw away I think it was in 2009-2010 season where they only finished two points behind Inter this Roma side probably should have won the title and that would have been a crowning achievement for Ranieri as he is from Rome and is a Roma fan I think this would have been this would have added something really really special of course he's most remembered for being the coach that brought Leicester the unlikely championship in 2016, coming on the back of a really bad spell uh, with Greece and also some other Italian teams, uh, you know, Inter, Juve and so on, didn't really work out there. But boom, Leicester, 
was doesn't do the disappoint because not even uh, within a year of the title he got sacked by Leicester, which I think is one of his biggest regrets. And he also was coach at Chelsea for quite quite a while, where actually I had a chance encounter with him. I was in London, I exited the um, Chelsea mega store, and there was Claudio Ranieri, and we had a little bit of eye contact. I mean, it was not it was not much, but his personality was revealed to me. He was kind of almost shy that I'm going 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 out. He was almost uh, surprised, and you know, hello. Hello. Like, he was the one that surprised me. And I was the one who was the one surprised. Of course, I knew that it was Ranieri, but uh, it was quite sweet to have that. Unfortunately, the game, his last game in charge, did not end with a win. But it was a crazy game that Fiorentina won 3-2, taking a 1-0 lead. Then Cagliari had turned around the 85th minute through Multandwa. Uh, Nico Gonzalez in the 89th equalized in the Melo. Penalty deep in stoppage time wins it for Fiorentina, who are not going to the Conference League. Fiorentina will finish the season in 8th spot, which means if they win that Conference League, that means that the ninth place team in Italy will go to the Conference League, where Fiorentina will be moved up to the Europa League. And the ninth spot was then at stake uh, in the early evening on Sunday, uh, where between Napoli and Torino, Napoli had to uh, play at home against Lecce, already safe, and Torino had to go to Atalanta, who just came back from this huge night in uh, Dublin, where they beat Bayer Leverkusen to win their first ever European trophy and the second only ever trophy ever. That also has, 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 has to be said. Uh, they got the guard of honor. Everyone was great. Yes, here are our heroes. Uh, and of course, Atalanta went out to win this one. Although for Serie A, uh, it would have probably been better if they would have lost this game because if Atalanta finished in fifth, it would have meant they get the performance spot and then sixth would also go into the Champions League, which would have been Roma. However, the ties between Roma and Atalanta are not very, very strong. In fact, Atalanta fans really hate Roma after there was a uh, friendship, as I've heard before, that got them broken for a weird reason. In any case, one of those weird ri rivalries. Uh, so Roma, thanks to the loss, will be in sixth place and will go into the Europa League. Atalanta, of course, Kamaka, Lukman, the Stars pass, passage with the pen penalty. It was all, all over Torino, which also meant that Napoli just had to get a measly win against Lecce. They didn't. They finished in 10th. This is, I think, the worst position since Milan finished, I think, 11th in 96-97. Uh, when they were defending champions. So really, really bad title defense for Napoli. They will not be in Europe. However, there is a particular coach that might be very explosive coming. Get ready for the Conte de Laurentiis show. I think this might be successful at first, but it will end in a big explosion that, you know, Vesuvius like. But this is Naples as well. Not sure what to make of it, but if this really happens, boy, boy, boy. But you know, uh, De Laurentiis, he has owned up that he made a main mistake uh, by firing Spalletti. He needs to make it better for the Napoli fans, and the Napoli fans wish the players, of course, um, a vacation full of excrement like the season was for them. So, there you go. I have to say, uh, scheduling these two games, especially the Atalanta game, not concurrently with the Roma game, probably didn't help in the relegation battle. Because suddenly, you know, if Atalanta were losing, Roma could catch them, then they still could get the Champions League spot out of their own um, power. So, I think it should have been scheduled at, at the same time. So, Roma did not have much to play for, whereas Empoli had everything to play for. Empoli needed a win to be safe. And then the other game, and that was the game that I was working between Frozenone and Udinese, it was clear. The winner is safe, and if it's a draw, then a Frozenone will go through. There was also a possibility of Udinese, I think, uh, getting a point and Empoli losing, so they'll finish level on points and go a playoff, whatever. It's not going to happen. I was actually quite happy that there was a decision on that day because this relegation playoff uh, one game, this would have been... Uh, we saw it last season. It was not pretty. It was not, not pretty. Um, of course, with Roma nothing to play for, Empoli had everything to play for, and you know, you saw the betting moves were old, and so, yeah, Empoli will win this one. And they took the lead through Um However, Roma was, at least in the first half, still in the game. They got an equalizer through Cristante that was called for offside. Uh, then Awa, with the first real shot of Roma on the goal, got an equalizer. So it's 1-1, meaning that at this point, 
Uh, it's still working out for the other two over in Frozen Only. Frozen Only, but they're so much better team. They outplay and they're a fun team to watch. They're not like this little team that holds back, make, uh, makes a tight defense. No, they're actually playing forward and Di Francesco has done a, a relatively entertaining job there. They're a good side to watch. They gave every game, uh, opponent, be it big or small, uh, something good. And uh, as of late, they even have, you know, gotten some clean sheets. They were definitely also in the best position of all of them. Because, you know, you could do it on your own. You have to avoid defeat at home. You have a home game. Everyone is for you. Fortunately, it didn't work out for them. Because out of nowhere, I mean, Udinese were hanging on. Fabio Cannavaro, nail biting, if you can imagine, although I cannot really imagine, he's too, <laughs> he's too Cannavaro, le, 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 let's put it that way. And then Davis scores the goal for Ud Udinese with one of the few attacks that they had. And suddenly Frosinone were on the hot seat, because if there was a goal at Empoli, then they are down. And did not come. It looked like they're just about safe. And you could see the scenes. It got very nervous because you knew that you, know, you have to open up. You're already very open. <laughs> but then uh, Udine has said her ass, has the way to feel. So it was really a nail-biting feeling. And then you have to hope that nothing happens in, in the other game. But yeah. Nicola brings on Nyang at halftime. And Nyang gets the big win. A uh, winner in the 93rd minute after Cancellieri assist. And Empoli are safe. David Nicola, another great escape jobs after Crotone, after Salentana. This Empoli one is right up there as well. I think he has a few more like, like this. I wish for him that, that he could have a stable job at a team. is not always called in when there's fire in there. But he's really good, good at that. Also, uh, you know, Count Calavaro uh, having gotten Udine on stable foot for the game. They only lost the one game against Roma that was played in installments. But then I also say I'm really sad for Frosinone because they were entertaining side, side to watch and they had also some interesting jerseys to boot. So yeah, Frosinone down, joining Sassuolo, joining Salentano. Of the other games, there's not much I can say. I mean, uh, Genoa get a 2-0 win over Bologna, uh, Juve 2-0 over Monza. We know that now Thiago Motta is most likely going to Juve, which I understand why he's doing it, but uh, it doesn't feel right to me. Honestly, uh, but yeah, let's see where, 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 where this is going. Also, who will coach uh, Bologna in the Champions League? Let's talk of Italiano or Fiorentina, which, uh, yes, at the moment, Bologna is better than Fiorentina, but it doesn't seem quite the right. But, you know, whatever. Um, and then Lazio and Inter manage one once against Sassuolo and Elas Verona, respectively. Of course, Anatovic is getting his final two goals, most likely for Inter. As I said, we are not done yet, because there's one game missing. That's the one that could never be scheduled, because both Atalanta and Fiorentina had deep runs in the Coppa Italia, where they played each other. So one was bound to get in the final, then they had deep runs in Europe, both making the final, Atalanta winning it, as, as we said. And it had to be re rescheduled, because uh, the sporting director of Fiorentina suffered a heart attack, unfortunately. Uh, Joe Baroni... Uh, passed on from that so i think it was right to postpone it but the only spot was now at the end of the season it means probably a little bit more for atalanta fiorentina cannot move up or down much atalanta if they win it they're in third place taking over juve so i guess this is what's gonna happen uh fiorentina will kind of cruise it out uh, they probably have won the conference league hopefully have won the conference league but then i'm not sure if they will but I'm very much rooting for them. And then we have also a small matter of the promotion playoff. We already know that Parma and Como are back. Uh, Como, another picturesque stadium in Serie A that I'm looking forward to. Parma, I'm really happy that they are up. And then it's between Cremonese and Venezia. And Venezia would add another very picturesque stadium uh, that I really would like to see. Honestly, Venezia took also a very interesting route, you know, they had to defeat Palermo, who themselves uh, had to defeat Sampdoria, so those were more the teams that I would have liked to see. Yes, I would have liked Brescia to beat Catanzaro, I don't know much about Catanzaro, very much deep in the south. They then duly lost to Cremonese, and so it's between Cremonese and Venezia who will come up. This will also be decided um, next Sunday, so probably on Monday there will be a last Serie A review video where we also look at the season in its entirety as well with a little summary. So, 
Let me know your thoughts on everything Serie A this past week coming up and, and it's on. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I'll talk to you soon with more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.